Hello, my name is John. Today we're going to go over a basic setup of how to start your CRT machine with basic, basic string up of the machine, getting it through Prime, and then programming your physician orders into the machine. Good. Okay. So when we go to start, we initially turn on our machine. You're going to come to this first screen that we see that states PrismaFlex system. From here, you're just going to hit the continue button. Then, of course, I want you to choose a patient. We are going to start with a new patient. And just for training purposes, I'm just going to put test into the patient ID. You guys can put either the room number of the patient, the MRN number, just some type of identifier for that patient. Then you're going to hit enter. You're going to go whatever that daily weight is for that day that you're setting up the machine. You're going to enter that. And then it wants to know the patient hematocrit. So whatever the patient's hematocrit is for that day, that's what you're going to enter into the machine. This is just a confirmation page. You're going to have several of these throughout the setup process just to confirm the information you're inputting into the machine. We're just going to look at it and go ahead and hit confirm. We're always going to start with our CRRT therapy. This is a very important screen here. We have sever several different modalities that the machine can perform, but we are always, always going to select the last one over here on the right, CVVHDF. When you select that one from that modality, then you can bounce between different modalities. So always start with CVVHDF. You're always going to select no anticoagulation. Even though your patient might be receiving some type of anticoagulation, you are not going to utilize this heparin syringe pump on the machine. So we always hit no anticoagulation. Again, you're going to confirm your selection. This is another confirmation page that we selected CRRT. We set up in CBV HDF and we're not utilizing anticoagulation. So we're gonna hit continue. And this is where we come to our first set of pictures of how to load the set onto the machine. Now I highly suggest that no matter how efficient you are at utilizing this machine, I recommend that you go through every bullet point. And as nurses, we like to try to save time and get ahead of ourselves and try to skip steps but if you really want the machine to function properly and do what it's supposed to do, again, I highly recommend you do exactly the step-by-step -step that, that the machine suggests. So the first one says, snap cartridge into carrier. And as you hit these bullet points, it gives you an exact picture of what the machine would like you to do to it. So we have our cassette. I've already torn it out of the plastic. It has a drain bag in here. You're not going to use this drain bag. You can get rid of it. And then you're just going to open up your plastic on all four corners. When you remove all these loops of tubing out of here, you see that they are taped. You do not want to break any of your tape at this time because you don't want your tubing to drag on the ground before you connect it to the machine. As you pull the tubing out of the plastic, you can grab it by the filter itself. And you're just gonna work on getting the tubing out of the way. And you wanna make sure that it's all out from behind the dialyzer. So we're going to snap the cartridge into the carrier. As you can see, we have two holes here on the front of the, the cartridge, and we're going to squeeze these plastic black triangles together and close them together, and we're going to slide our cartridge onto that holder. Now we don't want to push this section into the machine, we're going to wait and let the machine do that itself later. So our second 
bullet point says attach all pressure pods. You can see that the machine gives you close-ups. You have one yellow one on top and two red ones on the bottom. So we're going to find our yellow pressure pod. You're going to push that in and turn it. To, the only way the machine will allow you to turn it is this way. Once you find your bottom red ones, find the one on the right, place it on the machine, and twist it. And then the one on the left. As you can see, the machine will not let you put those in inadvertently. They'll only let you put it in one way and twist the way that it wants it to go. Third bullet point says snap discharger ring into its guide. So what you do want to do is make sure the picture on the screen matches what you do on the machine. So as you can see, you have this little black piece here. It's going to slide into its little holder. You're going to snap that in real good. And then you want to make sure that you're making this loop look, and actually I did that backwards. So we're going to flip it back around, snap that in. And you're going to take your tubing here into this blood leak detector. And what I recommend is flossing this back and forth like dental floss and sliding that all the way into the left. That will help prevent any alarms during the priming process. Fourth, bu fourth bullet point, temporarily hang your access affluent wide line. This is where you can start actually breaking the tape on your yellow line and on your red access line. And this is called the Y line because of the Y line at the end for your priming solution. And you're just going to hang that on the priming hook. Fifth step, place de-irrigation chamber in its holder. Attach chamber monitor line to the return pressure port. So you can see the first picture wants you to slide this piece of tubing onto this small peg right here. And you want to put it on with a little bit of force, but not much. Just a little push on. That's all you got to do. And then you're going to lightly screw down this blue twist clamp. You don't have to over tighten it because what will happen is the plastic will get stuck and it's very hard to get off of the machine. Then you're going to place your de-aeration chamber into its little holder. Always put the fat bottom in first and the skinny top second. And slide that right in there. Next step, it says insert return line into air detector and return line clamp. So all we have to do here is we have our little air detector. We're going to open the door, slide the tubing in there, shut our door. We're going to hear it click. And then we're going to take our return line and then push in on the Venus clamp and slide over. Now that is, that, that is locked in. The last step on this screen, we're going to, it says to open effluent scale and hang collection bag. So when we pull this scale out, and this goes for any scales on the machine, you want to make sure that you pull it out and you want to hear it click. What that click does is there's sensors in each one of these scales and that breaks that sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our drain bag, and these are, when you get these supplies, they are in their own individual package. You will open up the paper bag that it's in. Always want to make sure that you clamp your big pigtail on the bottom. Open up your drain bag, and you always want to keep this little pigtail on the top, but on the outside of the machine, so it's easy to connect your drain line to it. We'll place this on the scale. And when you push in in one of these scales, you also want to hear it click again. And when you hear that second click, that confirms that you have the, the sensor is recalibrating on that scale. So from here, we've done all of our steps. We followed it in the direction that the machine wanted. And now we're going to hit the load button. And this is when the machine will load this tubing set onto itself. You 
also want to make sure as it's loading into the machine, you want to make sure that any of the extra tubing is not going to get pulled in behind into one of the pumps. There's a barcode reader behind the tubing set here and it's reading the barcode on the tubing itself to confirm that we have an M150 on our machine. And typically, you are always going to have an M150 for your patients. And this says confirm set loaded, we have an M150. Occasionally, this is the point where if you do get an alarm, sometimes one of these pumps don't load properly. You can see the tubing kind of sticking out of the pump. And all you would have to do is unload, let the machine unload the tubing, then you would hit load again, and this easily help slightly push in and help the machine guide the tubing onto the pumps. So from here we're good to go, so we're just gonna confirm that we have the M150. So this is where we have another set of pictures. The first one, you necessarily don't have to do. It says to route lines through tubing guides. I suggest not to use these tubing guides right now because you want to have as much slack as possible in your lines until you actually connect to the patient. I recommend once you do connect to your patient, then if you would like to utilize your tubing guides, you can put those into these holders. But for now, we're going to skip that step this is where the second step is says connect your access effluent line line to your priming bag. Now I see what a lot of nurses will make the mistake as soon as they do this on the first set of pictures, they'll spike their saline bag. And that's a big mistake because if you get fluid into your tubing, this machine has to do several pressure tests. And if there's any type of solution in there, your set will fail. So that's where I see a lot of failures during the priming process. So this is where we're actually going to spike our first bag of saline. What you're going to do is hang it on your priming hook. Take your spike and just slightly spike your priming solution. You don't have to clamp any of your lines. As nurses, we are more familiar with clamping our lines with before we spike an IV. But if you do this properly, these clamps up here are locked and are closed off, so there's, there's no vacuum to suck your fluid out. So you don't need to clamp any of these lines. Our next step, as you can see, typically your oh, spike will not fall off. If that did happen in real life, you want to take it off and, and use a new set. If you look closely on the picture, it says connect pre-blood pump line to your PVP bag. And you can see that this is a white line. And if you look closely enough here on this tubing, this is, has a white line down the side of it. So this is where we can actually break our tubing, or tape on our tubing, take that off. I'm going to hang it here temporarily. For training purposes, instead of utilizing our big Prismasol or Prismasate bags, we're just using bags of saline. So remember, I'm going to pull my scale out. And this is the first PVP scale, and it has a white triangle on it. So the white triangle will connect to the white line. And also, since we are using bags of saline, we will keep the spike on because we have to spike our saline, but typically for our usual five liter bags, they have a lower lock and we would take the spike off and then twist on our lower lock onto those Prismasate or Prismasol bags. But for training, we gotta keep the spike and we're gonna spike our saline. And again, we don't have to clamp this line. We're just gonna go ahead and spike it. Remember to push your scale in, make sure the tubing is not in the way. Push in your scale and hear it click. And as you go down the line, the next step is to connect the dialysate line. It shows a green line on the computer. 
So you're going to find the green tubing. We're going to take our other bag of saline. We'll switch this side real fast. Push in our scale, we're going to hear it click. The next step is for our replacement line, and that is a purple line. So we find our purple tubing. We're going to connect our saline bag over here. Close our scale. And then one of our last steps here, it says connect return line to collection of fluent bag. And you can see we have a blue line in the picture on the machine. So we're going to find our blue tubing. This is typically our return line that returns blood back to the patient. But for the priming process, it's connected to the drain bag to push all that priming fluid into our waste bag. So we're just going to connect the blue return line to the waste. Last step, it states clamp syringe line on the set. Typically the reason why we're clamping this is remember we're not using our anticoagulation, we're not using our syringe pump for our heparin if we were to use it. So we're just going to go ahead and clamp it because we're not going to use it. Now just for future reference, if there was an order to instill heparin into the machine for a patient that is severely clotting, you can utilize this line, but you would run your heparin on an external IV pump tip, uh, according to the physician orders. You would open this syringe line, open it, and then connect your heparin here. But for now, we're just going to keep it locked, clamped off. And then from here, we're going to hit continue. So this is just saying verify setup. Verify, that, make sure that you uh, unclamp any clamp lines. Verify all connections are correct and secure. And we're going to hit both. You have a prime button and a prime plus test. To save time, we're going to hit both. Hit the prime plus the test button. What's the, once this does is once the machine is done priming, it will automatically kick in to the test mode. From here, once it's, it's waiting, it's a testing for the scales. Typically, you have about seven to eight minutes for this first priming. And then from here, if you need to, you can go do any more of your RN interventions that you might need to do for your patient or another patient that you have. You don't have to stand here and watch your machine prime. The machine will not beep or alarm at you. Actually, it says the next intervention is in five minutes. This priming bag will be empty when you come back. And it'll have a little screen showing to spike our second bag of saline. So from here, you can go off and do whatever you need to do for your patient. So we've come to the point now where we've finished our first prime. And the screen says priming one of two cycles complete. So all we need to do from here is just take your empty bag. We're going to hang our full one over here on the priming hook. Take this old empty bag off. Spike our second bag. And then from here, all you have to do is hit next cycle. And the machine is going to go into its second prime. Uh, and it says here that the prime test will happen in three minutes. So after this priming bag is finished, the machine will automatically kick into its testing mode. And you'll see there'll be several squares that it will go through. And also from this point, you can walk away from the machine, do what you need to do for your patient, and then eventually come back for connections to your patient. Ready? 
All right, for, as we can see here on this message on the screen, it says that we have passed our prime test. So from here, we can now adjust our chamber. The de-irrigation chamber is a very important piece of the machine. It should actually be checked at least once an hour. It's kind of hard to see here, but you can feel it, and you can, I'm kind of scratching at it. There's a frosty line right here, and we want to keep our, right now it's fluid, but while the treatment is going on, it's blood level. We want to keep that level right at that frosty line. So from this screen, we're going to hit adjust chamber. And as we can see, if you can not see, our level is a little bit low. So we're going to press and hold the up arrow and that fluid level will start to rise. And I'm gonna stop when it's right below it, and I'm gonna hit confirm level, and we'll see that fluid will go in a circle a couple times. So we're at a good level. During treatment, the reason why we wanna check this every once in a while is if the fluid level, if the blood level gets too low, it's going to drop below our return line going back to our patient and we're going to suck unwanted air into the line and the air sensor will detect it and then the venous clamp will lock down. If we let the blood level get too high, there is a mesh filter here in this little square piece and if that becomes wet with blood, then this filter cannot function any longer. So your blood will still turn in the blood pump, but the machine cannot perform therapy anymore. You'd actually have to take all of your tubing off and put a new one on. So it's good to keep that blood level right where it needs to be. So we've adjusted our chamber. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue. This is a safety feature. We always wanna keep this at the default at 400 mLs per three hour period. This is just stating that your patient will neither gain or lose 400 mLs of fluid in a three hour period. So just leave it where it's at at 400 and hit confirm. And this is where we have the selections to enter our flow settings. Basically what you're gonna do is look at your Cardex for your CRT orders. Whatever the physician has ordered, you're just gonna regurgitate that from your computer screen on the Cardex into the machine. So as you can see, once I hit, the first thing we want to enter is our blood pump speed, and I hit the word blood, you will see that will now become highlighted in red, and I'm going to take that up. Typically our orders are around 200 to 250, and I'm going to stop at 250. I'm going to now hit PVP for our pre-blood pump, and for training purposes, we're just going to say that's around 100. Typically, we'll see anywhere from 500 mLs to 1,500 or 2,000 mLs. So we're going to get it at 100. Then our dialysate flow rate, we're going to hit that. We're just going to take that to 50. Typically, it's much higher, though. Our replacement line, if that is ordered, remember that's our purple line over here, we're going to take that up to 200. We're always going to leave it where it's defaulted as a post because we want this replacement solution to hit the tubing post filter. And as you can see, the purple line empties here into our de-aeration chamber. And then if you were ordered any patient fluid removal, you will skip over here to patient fluid removal and say they wanted 50 off an hour. We will program that in right there. And we will confirm, and this screen is where we are going to review our prescription, what the doctor has ordered, and we want to make sure that it's exactly what is ordered in the computer. And then from here, we're going to hit continue. Now typically, I will tell you to follow word by word what the screen has to say on the Prismaflex. Before we ask, I'm going to deviate a little bit from what the screen has to say when we go to connect our patient. So a little trick here is we are going to clamp all of our Y lines. So we, we're going to clamp everything here where we had our priming bag. We're going to clamp this little yellow slider clamp, the red access line, and then we're going to go down 
to our blue slider clamp for the return line and clamp it. So to make sure that we have a, the most efficient, clean process connecting to our patient, right now we're going to go ahead and disconnect our Y from the yellow, and this is typically our drain line, and we're going to connect it now to our waste bag and remove the blue line from the waste bag, placing the yellow on. You want to make sure when you're doing this, of course, you always want to have gloves on. I haven't had those on the whole process, but in real life, you do. And you want to connect. You don't want to let any of these connectors hit anything while you're just connecting and connecting. So now we have both the red access line and the blue return line in one place on our priming bag. So when we go to connect to our patient, we can actually take this all together in one piece and lay it right beside our patient's catheter, whether it's in the neck area or in the groin. This way, we're per the, the machine wants you to do it step by step, disconnect your Y, then connect your red, come back to the machine, get your blue. This way, we're doing it all in one step, so we don't have to go back and forth between the machine and the patient. From here, you'll just go to your catheter, make sure that you have a somewhat sterile field set up with all of your alcohol swabs for scrubbing the hub, uh, your two empty 10 ml syringes for withdrawing any anticoagulant out of the patient's catheter, uh, and any type of, if you want to flush the line before you do withdraw that anticoagulant. Do make sure when you are connecting or disconnecting from your patient, you always have a mask on to prevent any breathing down any germs onto your patient's catheter. You want to make sure when you scrub the hub, after you scrub the patient's catheter, you don't let it go and touch the patient's gown or their skin. You always hold on to that and then connect all your access and return lines. And then from here, once you get everything connected to your patient, you would hit continue. Just want to verify your patient connection. And from here, you would just hit the start button. And now your machine will start to run and start to pull blood from your patient and start to perform dialysis. All right, thank you all for watching this video. Hopefully it will help you learning how to set up our CRT machine. If you do have any questions, you can always contact us at the dialysis unit or you can reach out to your leadership team when it comes to supplies for your general unit, please refer to your unit leadership to see where you all are gathering those supplies from. Um, a little tidbit too, if you ever do run into trouble and you can't get a hold of one of the dialysis nurses right away, there is a 1-800 number up here that di uh, directly contacts you with a live person at Baxter. All you have to do is repeat off to them the alarms that you're having, They'll want to know some pressure readings, and they will guide you step-by-step step how to troubleshoot your machine. Um, again, hopefully this will help. And again, my name is John, and hope to see you soon. Thank you.